Welcome back. You're watching World Insight with me, Tian Wei. The program is coming to you Monday to Friday on CGTN. The fifth World Internet Conference has opened in Wuzhen, Zhejiang Province. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is one of the biggest topics this year. But will it be more about competition or cooperation? Is the future of AI as promising as we have been told? Dr. Kai Fu Li, one of China's most prominent figures in China's internet sector is more than excited to answer some of those questions earlier. Well known as a venture capitalist and a technology executive, Mr. Li started his exploration with AI decades ago as a PhD student already when he developed the world's first speaker-independent continuous speech recognition system. Now, he finally made public his ties to AI with his latest book, AI Superpowers. You started, Dr. Lee, research about AI mm -hmm. back in 1992, if I remember right. Uh, that was my first product demonstration. Right, and I before that, you were already writing papers about artificial intelligence. Yes, in the 80s, yes. Wow. Have you ever thought about, at the time when you were doing your research back in the end of 1980s, mm -hmm. where AI mm -hmm. is already what it is today, and it has already become the centerpiece of even geopolitical debate? That's right. <laughs> yeah, we joke in our industry that back in the 80s and 90s, mm. uh, whatever worked in AI became engineering and product. <laughs> AI was all the things left that didn't work. Mm -hmm. But today, everybody wants to put an AI label yeah, or <laughs> on every <A> product. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's good to finally have to be in this uh, era of AI. You work for Microsoft, Google, and now you are your own entrepreneur for almost right. nine years. Yes. So you've seen the changes going on in the field mm -hmm. and how big corporations like those mm -hmm. are working with AI. Yeah. I see a very widespread adoption in a number of key industries. Uh, first and foremost is the internet industry because that's where there's a massive amount of data and the initial application area for the likes of um, Google, Facebook, Alibaba, and Tencent mm. because they have so much data coming in and by tweaking AI they can money basically comes out mm -hmm. of the AI engine mm -hmm. by having more users, more clicks through, more profit. Um, and then there are a couple of other industries that I think are going to be adopting AI over the next 10 years or so. Uh, one is financial industry uh, because of the virtual nature of the financial games and the large data nature. Uh, after that will be uh, the, the uh, retail industry, mm. uh, not just online but offline because again there's um, real profits coming out of the machine if you can know what users want. Uh, after that uh, will be the uh, health industry in terms of using AI in every way but mostly to uh, make us healthier mm -hmm. and uh, help doctors have mm -hmm. a better uh, uh, diagnosis. And then after that would be manufacturing. Uh, basically. Uh, replacing a lot of the repetitive work that's done in the factories with smart robots that can build products more efficiently, dependably, and also lower costs. Mm. And then a very, very big one a little bit later is automotive industry as the car becomes uh, autonomous and drives itself and that will disrupt everything in related to uh, transportation, ride sharing, logistics, trucks, so this will be a very large disruption that will happen in phases over the next 10 to 15 years. I see. How do you see the Chinese ones, for example, mm. companies that are based in China, like mm. Tencent, like mm. Baidu, like mm. Alibaba, be able to have this, in a way, a freedom of time mm. before the multinationals, such as Google and Microsoft, mm. Mm. Uh, displace their large operations in China? Or rather, is there a chance for mm -hmm. the latter group to even have that opportunity yeah. anymore? I think the China internet market uh, will, for, for the foreseeable future, uh, be uh, largely uh, run by Chinese companies. Why would you say so? Because of the very strong uh, product suite uh, Tencent's uh, WeChat product is better than 
uh, Facebook's Messenger uh, and uh, WhatsApp products. Uh, seen as Weibo product is better than Twitter's product. Mm -hmm. So product for product, the Chinese companies have not only become competitive, but in many cases, better than the American competitor. You described the United States, which is the pioneer in the quote-unquote discovery uh, stage of right. AI. Mm -hmm. And now what you believe is the implementation stage mm -hmm. of AI. Mm -hmm. And China plays a pivotal role. What exactly do you mean? In the, um, 1995 to maybe 2010, U.S. played a dominant global leadership position because all the efforts to find those discoveries were largely driven by America. Mm -hmm. But starting about 2010, uh, people started taking the proven ideas over the era of discovery and cherry-picking them for implementation. Yes. And then when it comes to implementation, China has a substantial advantage because it has a larger group of hungrier entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. uh, as well as a large market, which generates a lot of data. And no matter which AI algorithm you use, their ability to perform well depends more on having a huge amount of training data. It's almost like the rocket fuel mm. for AI. So in the age of implementation, China has uh, some advantages. The uh, recent challenges we see uh, that began with a number of uh, U.S. policies about um, more restrictive environment in the U.S., uh, I think uh, in all the technological areas may become a barrier. Uh, however, in the area of AI, uh, I, think, I don't think that would be the case. Why not? because the already discovered technologies, whether it was invented by an uh, American, Canadian, French, um, or, or Chinese, are in the public uh, area. They have been published, and uh, large, many of the, open, the source codes have been opened. Mm -hmm. And both China and US have been using that open source of knowledge for some time. And that open source approach to AI is partly what got it to uh, move so quickly in the last five to uh, ten years. Mm -hmm. So that part is out in the open and the people are honing their skills to see if they can use the open source code, tweak it for a domain, and then um, use a lot of data mm -hmm. to build good applications. So no uh, trade barrier is going to stop that. <laughs> Not only as a manager, as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. as an engineer, but also, you know, just personal experience as well. You are struggling between work and life. Mm -hmm. You are also struggling with cancer. Mm -hmm. um, now you come out of it, congratulations. Thank you. But you jump back right into work again. Yeah. Yes. Even though priorities have been shifting yeah. over the years. Uh, what do you make of this? you know, our human beings' capability, mm -hmm. adapting to what we really want at heart. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we can now work with technology, but to what extent can it really help us mm -hmm. or make us even more helpless? I, I think for um, many decades or even centuries, uh, we have been telling ourselves work is a key center of our very existence. And um, the age of AI will actually uh, shatter that belief because a lot of people's work will be disrupted by AI, especially those with uh, routine repetitive jobs. Okay. So I think it is time to rethink, is work really the center of our existence? It's certainly one of the important things we do, but if we make it the center, then if AI were to take our job away, then we're not only faced with a loss of income, but a loss of meaning. Mm. I mean, if, if my meaning depends purely on my job, and my job is gone because AI can do it better, then why am I here? And that could cause a large number of people mm. to feel unhappy, depressed, uh, and even uh, fall into substance abuse. So, so I think we need to collectively rethink what's the most important yes. thing in our lives, 
And when I faced death and, and, and had cancer, uh, work wasn't a part of me at all. Uh, it was totally unimportant to me, and mm -hmm. I saw how foolish it was for me to make my life depend only on work, and that things I treasured as I faced uh, disease and cancer uh, were really the love of the, my family and friends, mm. and, and that's something I think we need to cherish a lot more. Dr. Lee, you worked for the corporate world. Mm -hmm. You also have been working as an entrepreneur on your own. You witnessed 20 years of China's reform and opening up, mm. different political stages as well. Do you still remember when you came to China's mainland, 1998? Yes. What it was like, what kinds of technologies were most popular then? Uh, <laughs> I think it was all about the PC. It was so all the, about the PC. The executives would come to uh, Zhongguanchun, which at the time was just a lot of shops that put PCs together <laughs> and then loaded lots of software yeah. onto them. Uh, and those markets are, uh, are minima, minimal right now. Mm. And many of them, including this, the building that I work in, used to be a market for selling PC parts exactly. and, uh, and customized PCs. Uh, now it's uh, VCs and incubators and accelerators and entrepreneurs. Mm. I think the shift from 98 to today, the 20 years, we've witnessed uh, Zhongguanchen grow from a large electronics market into one of the two top centers mm -hmm. of entrepreneurship in the world. What is the biggest takeaway, you think, with this 20 years of being in China, in the tech world, entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. see the debates evolving? Well, for me, the, it, it was a very fortunate that I was here during this most amazing 20 years, mm -hmm. that things... And you played a part of it. I was fortunate to have played a part in it. I, I think the, what we see is uh, speed, uh, execution, uh, nimbleness that I've never seen anywhere else in the world. And, and um, it's, I, I, I see it with amazement. And I go back and think about what life was like 20 years ago. And, and really, we've made phenomenal um, progress. Where do you think the country should be going? If you have uh, a chance. <laughs> well. I think embracing fundamental technologies and um, rethink education because with all the things that are going well for China, uh, basic research is an area China is not yet uh, co-leading the world. And the universities have improved a lot, but there's still a large gap mm -hmm. with the best schools uh, in U.S. and Europe. And I think uh, redoubling the energy to go into these areas and also taking advantage of what we now know uh, with the era of AI is coming, why don't we use AI mm. to leapfrog in parts of education? Why don't we invest in professions and skills that are more useful in the AI era mm. rather than just trying to copy the best of uh, Western universities and high schools? Way to go. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee, for being with us. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Dr. Kai Fu Lee. And that is all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, try to find us, World Inside CGTN, into your search engine or check out our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Cine Weibo. From me, Tian Wei, and everyone on the World Inside team, thanks for watching. Tune in again next time for insights across China and around the world. Good night.